Hey everybody, it's World is Mine from the Future. Um, this was our first time trying to record a panel as a podcast. Um, I did my best to fix the audio, but unfortunately, Arrow and I have a tendency to be loud when we're passionate, and we had a separate mic broadcasting to the audience than was used to record this. So after this little intro, you might want to turn down the volume on the video just like a wee bit. Also, before recording started, we introduced ourselves to the audience, so for the sake of this recording, I'll introduce us in order. I have been a DR fan for nine years. Since before the games were localized to the United States, I had to read the fan-translated transcripts of SDR2 in 2012, but released monthly, so the month before I figured out what happened after Chapter 2's execution was like the longest month of my life, because I thought two characters had died during that execution. Um, I'm also a vin an indie visual novel dev that's currently working on my first big project. Um, the lovely lady to my right goes by Arrow Online and or Velcro Wave. They have been a DR fan for seven years and my friend for just as long. And they're currently working on their master's degree in creative writing for video games. That is going to be their career moving forward. They're almost done with their degree. To my left is our longtime friend Oz, who had been a DR fan for five years, and he played V3 alongside us when we all first played the game, a part as a part of like a, a gaming book club. His favorite game from the series is SDR2, and while he doesn't have any degrees or projects he's working on in video gaming, he's played more than his fair share of visual novels to know what he's talking about. So, without further ado, please enjoy our panel. Now side games, pretty much anything. Yeah. Gundam is best boy. Of course, I will die on that hill with you, my dudes. <laughs> um, so, I would like to open this panel with saying that it's not that we hate V3, it's that we were disappointed. Um, and we acknowledge that part of that bias is because it is a game that came following three different games that had one writer behind it. And V3 was the first game in the series that had different writers taking the helm. That Yes, Kodaka oversaw the storylines and the character designs and things like that, but he did not directly write this specific game. And it might just be that we are just fans of Kodaka's style of writing visual novels, and that is where some of this bias is coming from. But I, I think that we have enough background that the edits we're making, we're trying to fix the storyline with minimal edits. That is the goal. When we're going through and pointing out these flaws is showing how to fix them without completely rewriting the whole game. That is not the goal. It's not that we hate every single character. It's not that we hate every aspect of this game, it's that there's a few flaws that overshadow in some aspects the parts of these games that makes it so good. That makes Danganronpa still survive as a franchise even though this game was so polarizing when it did get released. Um, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, no, we, we, we love Danganronpa and we, we had high hopes for this game. And we still love this game despite the flaws it has. Like Alex says, it's it's just a matter of disappointment. Our, our expectations were this high when they should have been this high. Yes. But it's by no means a bad game. It's just got its flaws. Um, and just for some backstory, in case some of you guys came in when it got released to the PlayStation 4, or you saw the anime and then got super hyped that there was a whole video game series about the lore behind it, um, when V3 was first announced, it was announced as a brand new storyline. That you did not have to play any of the three previous games in Danganronpa to get in on this. This is supposed to be like a ground floor, brand new game for the next generation of consoles for people to get into Danganronpa. No lore necessary. Um, another thing they advertised super heavily was that there was going to be different endings. They promised all of the people that were watching all of the trailers and things like that, oh you have these opportunities in the trial to lie and those lies will change the outcome of the trial and it will be so amazing and you can have like way more agency when this game comes out. And I think that the problem is, is when you were 
announce big features like that before testing them, before realizing whether or not it's feasible within the time that the company gives you to make that feature in your game. Uh, when crunch time comes, stuff starts getting cut. And if you cut something that you advertised in an interview, in a splash art image, in anything, if you've seen the internet historian documentary on No Man's Sky, it's that choo-choo train where the hype train gets high, 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 high. And then as soon as you realize, oh, the line mechanic just changes four lines of dialogue. That's my alternate ending for the trial. Boom. Disappointment. All of a sudden, like this new mechanic that would have been like neat feels like trash because you were promised something way, way, way more. And I think that's what they ran into is they just were pressured to make this game stand out in marketing. And the marketing team nailed it. Everyone was super hyped for this game. And then the game released and like longtime fans were like, oh, that that's what we're getting. And my biggest pet peeve with this, uh, with the um, Switch release is they're still advertising Kaede as the lead protagonist. Still. Like, it's not a plot twist anymore. Why is she on the cover? Like, I love her. But just admit that's not the person you're playing through the whole game. Like, just, just stop acting like this is a brand new thing. We still got four minutes of wiggle room with, so I'm not going to set the timer. We're trying to get this so that we're not going over too much because we've got a lot to say and a lot of feelings about this game. Um, but first off, we'll be covering overall themes. So Rachel and I have been streaming this game nonstop for the month prior just to like refresh so we weren't having any like bias interrupt. Like all these notes were taken during the gameplay for the flaws. Um, and we were interacting with other fans in the chat as well. So other fans were talking to us. And one of the biggest flaws that uh, popped out to us just for the game as a whole, the Monocubs, I can't think of anybody that was, like, hyped about the Monocubs. Like, every fan I've talked to finds them annoying. Um, in the prologue alone, their dialogue takes up a third of the prologue and a third of chapter one. And they don't add anything to the plot. It's all comic relief. So if the jokes don't land it feels like a waste of time. Whereas in the previous games, the mascot characters were supposed to represent the overall theme of that game, either hope versus despair, truth versus lies. Um, in Ultra Despair Girls, it was like an inverse of hope and despair. So it was like um, black hope, white despairs. And with the Mono Cubs, they just kind of were there. And I know when they first got announced and everyone saw them, they're like, oh, it's an Ultra Despair Girls reference. It's going to be like, the Monokuma kids have each have like their own mono cup. No, they just they just are. Um, and when everyone's on screen at once, it just slows down the story to a crawl. Does anybody like all five of the mono cubs? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, you're not weird. That is a legitimate, like... Really cute. Like, every time they're on screen, I was like, yes, like, yes. Right, no, and it's not that I think, like, the, the baby beers was a bad idea. I just yeah. think one of the biggest flaws of, like, V3 was they were like, go big or go home. And I was like, maybe we should go home occasionally. Like, it's a little too big. <laughs> like, maybe <laughs> dial it back a little bit. I don't think they, like, add, like, a ton of substance, but, like... Right, we're, like, I'm, like, I'm okay with, like, some comedy relief especially for the mascot character in a super depressing storyline but like i feel like the mascot should be serving a greater purpose other than just comic relief like even usami had like a point when she was on screen and being bullied um yeah hi uh, um, yeah to be honest i found myself sort of like skipping through the um chapter four always skip Always skip their dialogue oh, in chapter four and chapter, yeah, just chapter four was. Oof. So our recommended fix, um, design we're not married to, but just something I threw together to make the slide look nice, is to cut down the number of mascots in the game. So either have like two mono cubs and then mono kuma or then three mono cubs and have 
one monocub represent truth, one monocub represent lies, and then the third mascot being the in-between, the gray area. So for the characters that we designed for like an example, we have Uso Kuma that represents white lies that would assist anyone that wanted to stay at the school and have the characters act more like kids. And then like they treat it like an actual game, not like a, oh, ha, ha, it's a death game, but like, oh, it's a de- it's a game. Like everyone's here. We're all playing. We're having a good old time and like not fully comprehending like the gravity of the situation. And Uso Kuma would keep trying to like, treat it like a Neverland paradise, like hating the killing game, trying to keep them from thinking about escaping or stuff like that. And like trying to keep them in the school indefinitely. And then we'd have like Makuma, which would represent like the bitter cold truth that would assist anyone looking for an escape. So they would like the person that would assist killers, the person that would assist escapees trying to go out through the tunnel and then like doubles down on playing the game. Like the killing game is the only way to leave the school. And then yeah, just taking away the adult content when you're having child characters. Like, I understand why they had it for Ultra Despair Girls when you had child characters, like, reenacting their trauma. But having characters that identify as children making jokes about pregnancy and things like that. Like, it was just a little much. And with all the other characters involved in the cast, like, I felt like we didn't need additional comic relief of that nature. Like I think a little more lighthearted, a little more like Kaede brand, like optimism kind of comedy would help balance out some of the darker themes they were talking about in the game. Um, do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, no. Uh, the the five bears, it, it just becomes too much and too cluttered. We, we looked at how long it took to beat the other two games versus how long it took to beat the three. And Aside from chapter one, all of the other chapters are relatively the same length, but the time difference, down and up for one and two, are about 20 hours each. V3 is 40. And not much is added gameplay-wise. It's the, the, Those cubs just show up so much, and it's not needed. They don't add anything to the story. And if, they, if they did add anything, they're purely there for comic relief. Which is not a bad thing, but when you already have Monokuma, cutting it down to these two is more like what they like what they did in in, in another episode. Not is it another episode? Yeah, yeah same yes. thing. It's just Spare Girls another yeah. episode. Yeah. Same thing with the, those two um, Monokuma characters yeah, that being alternate sides mm-hmm. of one argument. And that worked. That worked for that game, and it's just. And I think it, it could, worked here too. Yeah, I think it could work again for truth and lies, especially if you have characters supporting white lies and characters supporting the truth, even though it's not pretty, having these mascot characters be sounding boards so we're not having all these monologues. We have the conversation going and like a more engaging mm-hmm. argument of what's going on. That you just with mascot characters, they're cute, but you can utilize them to move the story along as well. Um, and we're going to have to move on to their next big flaw for the overall game as a whole. Go big or go home! All the writers knew that this was going to be the last Rompa. So when it came to backstories, when it came to other story elements, I felt like they felt like they couldn't cut anything because, oh my gosh, this is the last Rompa game. This is the last time I can get this idea into this story. I'm going to put it in anyway, even if it doesn't mesh with everything else that's going on. Um, and I know, like, for the flashback lights, there was a point to that. There was a point to the backstory suit. But in the middle of gameplay, as soon as you get past Chapter 3, like, it starts becoming overwhelming, especially when you have one flashback light that gives you five flashbacks in one chapter. Like, it's just a lot. Um, the motives as well, they started so big with that first motive, which was the motive for Chapter 4 of SDR 2, basically. Yeah that there was no escalation that they could go for that rather than making it like small and character driven, then build and build and build until you have this big grand motive that like is impossible to ignore. They started there and then had nowhere to go. So it was like this line of action where it was like super big and then kind of there and then up here and then up here and then down and then up. And it just for good story development and building tension, you want to start small, go big. And, like, even the quiet moments, I felt like I was in a telenovela. Like, we were, like, way high energy, 
with our sadness, way high energy with our anger, way high energy with our happiness, that there was no levels where there was like some small quiet moments for the characters to like stop, pause, absorb what just happened the last chapter. You don't get a moment to breathe in the entire game. You really don't. Like, you're going boom, boom, boom. And I know that's why Shuichi is as stressed out as he is. I would be, <laughs> yeah. too. I yeah. would be, too. I'd be so done, too. But, mm -hmm. like, for a narrative, as, like, the audience and the character insert needs to have time to breathe and think about what's going on. The only time that we get a sort of breather is when, during that bug investigation, the, the, the bug... Oh, yes, thing. the, the, um... Whatever. The oh, gosh! Thing. The insect meet and greet. The there we go. Insect meet and greet. That's the only breather we have. That wasn't, like, skippable. That wasn't an unlockable scene. Mm -hmm. That if they had more of those canonically that you couldn't avoid, it would just give the whole cast a little more harmony, I think. Mm -hmm. oh. um, so, for how to fix it, reduce the scale. Yeah. Start smaller. We only care about what the characters care about. So dice getting captured mattered way more to me than the meteorites coming down. I cared way more about what happened to Kokichi's found family than I did about meteors because it doesn't fit within our scale of understanding. Like we've never seen, like we've seen a meteor shower, but it's never touched earth. So when you have a whole bunch of world ending elements, it's like hard to wrap your mind around. And it's kind of like when you're three and someone tells you like, your dad died, like, you don't get it. You're like, when he's gonna, when he's gonna coming back? Like, it doesn't hit the same way as something that you can identify with a personal experience. Um, scaling down the scope of the disasters. So instead of, like, a meteorite, maybe have an earthquake that's breaking things in their hometown. You know, scaling down the motives. And we'll go into, like, each motive one by one and how you can scale that down into a way that matters more to the killer and gives you more sympathy than just, I'm the president of Japan. Like, that just, that's its home beast. And just, it's a character-driven narrative. I care more about character decisions than the environment forcing characters to make decisions. I, I want to be in their head. I want to be in their struggle. I want to see where they're coming from and see how they overcome it. Environmental storytelling is absolutely viable, but um, it's also the expectation of Danganronpa because the characters have, it's always been character driven from the beginning. So immediately when you're given this environmental storytelling, it's arguably okay uh, environmental storytelling. It's not the, the characters feel one note and all right. So the overall message we want you to, to take away from like our big problem with this game is subtext is good, vague storytelling is bad. It's okay to leave clues for things of why characters are doing things, of motivations, and you know have something in their room to tell you what they really care about. But if you're just having it open-ended and vague, it frustrates the audience. It's not a sandbox. It's a black hole where you're looking down and you go, whoa. Well, where's my answer? Where, where's my hints? Where's my rabbit hole I can go down? That just is like a deep dive where I could go in any direction and free fall and never find the ground. Yeah, there's there's an, an um, there's an amalgam amalgitude of uh, subtext in the game, but like Alex says, it's all of the subtext amounts to something that's so vague that you don't you're not given an answer. It's up to the player to figure out what the answer is, and that. It's sometimes a good thing, but with how much of it is in V3, it can also be a muddled thing. It feels like I have a third of my puzzle pieces are blue, a third of my puzzle pieces are green, a third of my puzzle pieces are yellow, and they're not fitting with the other colors. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what color of a puzzle V3 is trying to tell me half the time. Awesome. So we're going to get started and we're just going to go kind of chapter by chapter so we can get into the meat and potatoes mm. of the game. Because it started out so strong. So strong. Oh, the first chapter is incredible. Incredible. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I feel like we got to like chapter three and then halfway through chapter three, it felt like it was like a completely different game. Like chapter one's great. Chapter two is pretty good. And then chapter three is just kind of like, okay, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So for the prologue, um, of course, it's going to have major spoilers for the game, but because Kaede dies, they doubled the length of the prologue and doubled the length of the chapter one so that you got to care about her more. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So like her story arc that normally would stretch over, you know, six chapters is crammed into one chapter and you really feel it. Like it took us twice as long to finish that part of the game as every other chapter. And we love Kaede. We love Kaede so much. But we could have loved Kaede for like a little more <laughs> instead mm-hmm. of it all in one chapter. So in the prologue, they show everybody's true identity. This is the only time we have a non-biased character showing us what happened before the killing game started. We see everyone in their daily clothes. We see Kaede and Shuichi's organic personalities where like Shuichi's kind of like that withdrawn emo kid and like Kaede's bossy and mad. Yeah. She's like, I'm gonna fight someone. Why are we here? Um, oh, yeah. Let's go. yeah. Mm-hmm. And there should be hints during that scene that confirm whether or not the mastermind's lying in chapter six. Mm-hmm. That that is gonna be that clue that increases replayability that tells you what was the truth and what was the lie. Because Shuichi doesn't know by the end. That hurts my heart. Um, side note. Kibo's design in that scene, he has no lines on his face. Like, for the first two playthroughs I was going through, I'm like, is he really a robot? Like, what is going on? Why does his design change so drastically from this pregame scene to chapter one? But I think that was just, like, an artist thing where they had, like, multiple... Like, if you look at the art book, there's a whole bunch of beta Kibos that didn't get used. And I think they just went with beta Kibo for Mm pregame, chapter one, final Kibo. So, as it stands, Kaede's introduction and Rontaro's dialogue implied the following in the original game. All contestants were kidnapped and held in the game against their will. Contestants are aware of what a killing game is, recognize Monokuma, and none of them are happy to be there. Like, all of them are like, oh, no, 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 no. And then, lastly, from the moment the flashback light is introduced, every single character in that room becomes an unreliable narrator. That we have no idea at that point what is organic, and what is made up. The game also feels like it lies to you in that sense, too, because they actively mention, oh, you wanted to be here, but they clearly didn't want to be. Well, and fun fact about that scene, it's the only scene that doesn't come with a flashback light. It's literally, like, it's Sumugi telling you this is what happened. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's weird. So that's why I don't think Sumugi is telling the truth entirely. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll get to that yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, chapter one! So... Chapter one, we've kind of split into two, and we'll get into that a little bit. But um, the first thing I noticed when we were playing chapter one is that Kaede's room had no Monokuma shelf, and that's the minute I realized Kaede was not going to last the chapter because there was no way to collect Monokumas. I'm in chapter one, and I was going to get to collect Monokumas. Where do I get to put them? Um, The first blood perk gets brought up as a motive and then is never used. Mm -hmm. It's literally thrown away. Um, we've already went over the monocubs, we already went over the length, and it repeats the rules of the killing game that aren't applicable to the trials that happen in this game. So anyone that's played Danganronpa already knows the basic rules of Danganronpa, but they repeat stuff, and this is a consistent problem, is that they repeat stuff that doesn't get used in the overarching narrative, Mm -hmm. and it slows down the story. That we already know... You know, if someone dies, we're going to have a trial. We get that. And, like, there's some exposition that's needed, but I don't need to hear it three times in the same chapter. There, Yeah, there are things that are brought up in Chapter 1 that are they're repeated a couple of times and not used again. And that's um, when, when you're writing a story, it's going to be massive, right? Um, so the, the most important thing to writing a story is... Everything should be, should have a purpose. Comic relief, not comic relief, everything should have a purpose, right? And monocubs, yeah, no purpose, but we covered that. Yeah. Um, but uh, specifically something that happens in chapter one that gets established, which is, I guess, in a way trying to allude to something, but cost pox, right? It is an idea that comes up and is never used again. You know, um... When she's cosplaying mm-hmm. fictional characters later down the line, like, that's the moment to, like, show her hand if she cosplays mm-hmm. anyone from the cast of E3, whether or not they're fictional or not, or whether or not she was lying about it to begin mm-hmm. with, and they just... 
never address it except for that one trial, which just yeah, confused she the Dickens out of it. Well, and no one had been accusing her of cosplaying as a person in their friend group at that point. So, like, mm -hmm. it feels like it kept being brought up just as a possibility and then never used. Right. Like, it would have been interesting if you have this cospox and you, and you're, it's a lie. Because that's what Sumugi does. She lies. But, um, and then, and, and turn around and actually cosplay these real people and in turn commit murder as those people she's cosplaying things like that could simple changes that could make just the notion of cospox more important than it is and you can keep the whole conversation of i don't cosplay real people that's weird without having the cospox part like, exactly you, you, it would be more of a character choice and less of like a, a, care of, a theater really like it mm -hmm. felt like theater yeah but um I don't want to just like be negative for this chapter. So Kaede is the best. Like I love Kaede oh, so is, much. This chapter is amazing. It's it, it's it's the best chapter. I don't think and, anything coming in it has to no, oh, no, and it's it's super well written. The the trial is great. The game, the investigation, the murder, all of it's great. Kaede, Kaede, and Suichi's dynamic is the best thing. Ever. I also like because it sets up expectation that going forward now, my protagonist is not necessarily safe. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. our, our biggest revisions for this isn't even changing anything too much other than, like, trimming how long it is and stretching Kaede's storyline out. Because I feel like this chapter would have had a bigger impact if it was chapter three, not mm -hmm. chapter one. Um, that would also give us more of a chance to get to know Rontaro and care about him when something happens to him, his talent what's going on with that, why does it matter, you know, we could have had, like, a spin down of Hinata where you have a character that doesn't know his talent and then doesn't care about it. Like, it would be so cool to just have this chill about, like, ah, I don't know what my talent is. Eh. So, like, the killing game, right? Like, that's kind of messed up. Can we talk about that instead? Like, that would have been, like, such a cool dynamic, especially mm -hmm. if you have, like, this truth seeker, Shuichi, like, kind of like, but I gotta know. But I have to know yeah. what the answer is. Yeah. And then, since we're moving chapters around, I would like to mention keeping the pacing of Angie's B plot of like the growth of her cult. The biggest threat I felt in the entire Danganronpa game because there's nothing you can do about it. Like it's just mm -hmm. happening in the back and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. I don't like that, and you can't make a decision to stop it. So you're just like, oh, I hope that doesn't do anything. Oh, yeah. I hope that doesn't. Yeah, I, I hope that doesn't come back to bite me later. Oh, and it came back to bite you later. It does. It does <laughs> in such a beautiful way. So moving on, chapter two. So this would. We're keeping this for like what the chapter was in the core game so that we don't lose track of the timeline. But so chapter two, we were recommending having as the first chapter. Um, Kurumi's motives in this were just too big. Like mm -hmm. having her be the actual acting president of Japan was just like a little too much. All you had to do was have her be serving that family and we would care. You can make yeah. it like a government, like official. Like a or have her be a f informant or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um the biggest thing we had with the trial on this one was the glove piece. Her gloves have metal rings on them, obvious metal rings, and the thing floating in the pool was black, and Mia wears black gloves as well. So when Shuichi was like, it's a black glove, it has to be Kurumi, I'm like, it doesn't, though. Like, one of the people missing an alibi also has black gloves. So if they even just, like, kept the ring on that so it would sink to the bottom of the pool so no one could fish it out during nighttime, that would have worked so much better than just, like, aha, a scrap of black cloth that has to be... One of the many people that wears gloves in this room. Which is a lot of people. Which is a lot of people. Yeah, and um, yeah. during the investigation portion of this chapter, Shuichi doesn't investigate the bathroom at all. Yet he immediately knows that the handcuffs had to have come from the bathroom, even though there's literally a magician's lab that has a whole bunch of escape artist stuff and bondage stuff. Mm -hmm. The fact that he immediately jumped to handcuffs when I was playing it for the first time, I was like, well, where, where do I have to investigate next? Where next? He's like, oh, the bathroom with the handcuffs. I'm like, the what? There was a bathroom in that room? Oh, I guess there's a bathroom in this room. I guess that exists. I guess there's a shower room that's also a prison. Huh. That's weird, but all right. <laughs> that's weird, but go off. So I went over all the flaws, if you okay. have any other flaws to yeah. add. Um, no, like going off of the whole uh, handcuffs in the bathroom, like there's an air of, I need to guide the player somehow, and I, I we... We get that. Um, 
that moment was pure but Batman it, logic. It, it, yeah, yeah, you can't. It's it's the same thing as you're right. You're playing a D and D campaign, and you uh, all the characters know what everybody is doing, even if, even though you're separated. It's kind of like that. Yeah. Character knowledge versus um, player knowledge. Uh-huh. If he was like the support character that during the investigation was like, oh, they're in the bathroom. Like, right. Okay, so like my pl- my character, the character I'm playing didn't mm-hmm. look in the bathroom, but thank you, detective, that should be looking all over the place. Mm-hmm. I'll go check the bathroom now. Yeah, and you're with Huichi the entire time. It's not like he can be the detective character and go off on his own because you're with him the whole time. Yeah, that is so. As soon as you play as Shuichi, they have to nerf how smart he is because he has to be. He has to figure things out slower because mm-hmm. you're the player now. Um, so we recommended reducing Kurumi from the mastermind behind the government to an informant, like someone that was supposed to give information to the governmental bodies and has important information to give that mm-hmm. could change the course of what's happening outside. Still keep a lot of those pleas the same, but just reduce it to more character driven Um we mentioned the metal ring, um, and having her be an informant can also foreshadow that a group is hunting them down from outside. So we can have some confirmation from a character and not a flashback light that something's going on outside. Yeah, and the biggest thing is mentioning it before the trial's over. Yes, having her say, this is why you shouldn't vote for me before they vote. Yeah, that would... That would have been a beautiful plea. It would have been something no... Killer had done before was like, yeah, I did it, but you need to let me out anyway, and this is why. Yeah, and we, I know why the creators didn't do it because the player would think, well, well, yeah, we have to let her out because she she's gonna go get help, and that's that's just so we don't run over yeah, time. That's, that's just so we don't run over time. Yeah. But. Um. But yeah, and then just Kaede and Rontaro existing in this chapter, being Kaede and Rontaro to add some different character Mm -hmm. interactions since we are shifting the timeline for this. Yeah. Chapter three! Oh, do we have have to talk about this one? Yes. But chapter three, that cult, as much as I hate Angie, as much as I see, this is... My hate for Angie is just a personal hate because she scares me. Such a good antagonist. Oh my gosh, that was so I did. I really did. And he, but um, anyway, uh, that whole dynamic, the buildup of the cult was brilliant. Best daily life I've been in. I'm like, I'm feeling so stressed, even though no one's been dead yet. Like, yeah, yes. no, it was, it was, it was brilliant. No one's dead, and I just. And that's because it was character driven. That had nothing to do yeah. with Monokuma. That had nothing to do with motives. That was all Angie. That was all character driven. Yeah. Um, Nobody's even dead. You're just panicking. Yes, mm-hmm. slowly stressing. So, um, biggest flaw for chapter three: Shuichi and Maki ask, "When did Tenko die five times oh, during the investigation?" <laughs> yeah, they do it. And it's ridiculous. When Shuichi was in the room when it happened, and the Monokuma file has the time of death right there. I love the second flaw. <laughs> um, yeah, second flaw. Just incest being a theme for reasons. It was just, it was a lot, and it was a lot of a lot, and I kept waiting to, like, I started, like, rapid skipping, because I'm like, this, no, 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 and it just kept happening, and it just kept happening, and I kept seeing that same CG of, like, his sister's butt on screen, and I couldn't. I could not. Um, and I know Wait, I'm pressing... Was Kia was a serial killer? Yeah. I didn't actually, yeah! I didn't actually catch that. So, Cork Kia was a serial killer... And I know I'm dressing as a serial killer character, but this is the third trial game where they're like, and... This chapter, we have a serial killer amongst us. I'm like, we've done this so many times. There's only so many ways you can make that unique. Yeah. Especially when they're bringing back the multiple personality disorder thing again. Yeah. Um, I mean, they brought it up as possession, but it's still multiple personality. Like, surprise, it's me. Peko did it, even though it was an act. Mm-hmm. Fukawa did it because it was a actual disorder. So having it a third time is just, like, a little much. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Truth bullets, they have a lot of truth bullets that overlap with certain clues. Yeah. Um, so just cutting down how many truth bullets you have and just utilizing them in different ways rather than having the same information repackaged with a different sentence and another truth bullet, it would have just helped this mm-hmm. go along. Um, they also never discuss what Tenko's murder weapon is. Shuichi just knows what it is, even though it's under the floorboards and to the side. Like, nobody goes like, hey, Tenko is in a cage. 
what exactly killed her? Yeah, it's another one of those, you're with it, you're with the protagonist the entire time, but he knows more than you do. And you don't get, and like, all it would take is for him to, like, click on it and go, that must have been with the murder weapon. But, like, none of the other characters are even remotely stressed of, like, how did she no. get cut in this box? Yep. Um... I still don't remember how that freaking trial went. Like, I, I played it recently, and I still don't remember all the details of it. it it's all over the place. Yeah, they they start at one point with one victim, then they move to the second victim, which they said over and over again in the trial didn't matter, so why are we having a trial about it anyway, mm-hmm. just because we want to know. And then they went back to the beginning, because as soon as you go like, you killed the second girl, he's like, aha, I didn't. I mean, I did, but it doesn't matter, because who killed the first one? It wasn't me, and it's like, it's still you! Like, it's still you! Mm-hmm. Yeah, the first, per- first person to kill is the one that matters the most. Yeah. Yes, because they say if the first killer is separate from the second killer, then only the first person killer gets to graduate and the second killer just mm-hmm. dies with everyone else. Yeah. The oh. First of all is the only one that matters. Also, fun fact, Korikyo plots to kill Kaede in chapter one if you finish his pathway. He legitimately asks her to meet his sister and she goes, oh, okay! And like, as soon as you play chapter three, it's like, um, no! No, Kaede, no! Protect Kaede! Yeah. Protect the adorable bead. I see a hand that's been so patient this whole time. I'm so sorry. Um, would you do anything the, only the first killer gets convicted, so would you have it so that Kyo still kills Angie, but um, Tango dies in some other way? Actually, yeah, actually, our recommendation was for once don't have a double murder in Danganronpa. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, our, our the major arguments should, uh, since we have things getting reorganized rather than them trying to contact, oh gosh, Rontaro is what, who they were trying to Mm -hmm. talk to. Have them talk to, try to talk to Karumi to find out what the information she was Mm -hmm. trying to get through the government was before she died. Um, Keep Angie alive and then make her red herring for who killed Tenko and have it be, did Angie sabotage the seance because she didn't believe in it and then utilize her Mm -hmm. more. That way her story arc doesn't end with, the cult disappears because Angie's not here anymore and people just stopped caring yeah. about it and never mentioned it again for the rest of the trial. Have the cult fell apart because Angie was wrong about something for once and people stopped believing in her. And then you can have an additional monologue when that happens later of her being in a similar position that Kaede was when everyone stopped listening to her, have like a little bit of a foil action going on. Um, and just change Korakio's motive like a wee bit. I thought it would be interesting if you have during the seance, rather than contacting anyone they were intending, because they keep, mm-hmm. like, ghosts are real in Danganronpa. We know this. Um, mm-hmm. We've seen them. We've seen multiple characters that have psychic abilities that have things like that. So having during the seance be the person they contact being his sister, and then that being his realization that she's dead, and then having him panic oh my gosh, my sister's dead. I don't remember my sister dying, but I just talked to her spirit and there she go. Like, have that be his motivation for I have to get out and figure out what happened. Mm -hmm. Why is my sister dead? And then don't even bother with having, like, having all these character motivations be separate from Monokuma, I think would be really interesting in just showing that part of the problem is these characters are more prone to killing each other than any other cast member. Like, they, They like... They just don't trust They hate each other. They are so mean to each other once Kaede's gone. It's just, like, constant fighting all the time. Yeah, Yeah, like, she was... They they were all chill when she was around, but the moment she was gone, it all fell apart. Mm -hmm. Kokichi gets punched three times. (laughs) He's not like he doesn't deserve it half the time. I didn't say that. I said people (laughs) beat up another character multiple times. Well, maybe yeah. if you want to use it to a little <laughs> Like, fisticuffs happen a lot. Like, he's a brat. Like. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, yes. I do have to ask, just because uh, I'm curious, in Danganronpa, we can kind of see a pattern on how each, like, chapter happens. So, like, in all three, there's a double murder in chapter three. Mm-hmm. The norm, and the normal pattern for chapter two is they reveal some sort of serial killer. Does it bother you guys that they broke that pattern in V3 because the serial killer was revealed in Chapter 3 instead of Chapter 2? Does that bother you? No, because he was the double murder killer, so the double murder still happened in Chapter 3, which was part of the formula. They just moved him. Yeah, no. So it just irritated me that they were going back to that formula, like, we mixed it up because we moved him a chapter. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, you didn't. You did the same thing. You just moved the pieces around. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with keeping that formula. 
No. It's um, more so, uh, it's the, how long are you going to repeat this that your audience is going to be, oh, there's going to be a double murder. Who are right. the two people going to be? Because one, one and two were written together to be deliberate foils of mm-hmm. each other. That's why it was a pattern. So V3, that was supposedly a new storyline, repeating yeah. the pattern again was odd and kind of disappointing. Right. And, like, obviously we know that it was connected, but we wouldn't have known that at that, po- at that point in the game. Yes. I just wanted to say thank you for mentioning the truth bullets overlapping. I have also recently gone through a V3 playthrough. And it's I, annoying. And the streamers had to look up a guide because they couldn't figure out. It's super play. frustrating. Like, if one word's yeah. different. Like, I thought the mental gymnastics in Danganronpa Patu with the bathing suit was, like, uh, a wild yeah. card. Okay, but this. that was cool. That yeah. was cool. That wasn't cool. <laughs> what did you guys say about the They overlap. So you have, like, three different truth bullets that give you the same information, but slightly differently. And only one of them works. And only one of them works. They were all the same thing. And they'd all be in your little holster, so you'd have two people agreeing with each other during the trial, and then you'd go, I agree with that person with this truth bullet, and they're like, no, it's wrong. So you'd go through the three similar truth bullets, and it's still wrong. I'm like, oh, so I have to go with the second person that said the same thing slightly different, and then agree with them. Okay, cool. Yeah, Yeah, no, like, it it just was a little much. So this would be our our mythical chapter two, because then we'd have some escalation and... Stuff like that, yeah. I know, quick question. Yeah. I had to go back to chapter two because I didn't know we were allowed to ask questions. What you were saying about the metal ring on the glove, Yeah. how would that work when, because remember, she was holding the rope, so the part that ripped off was on her palm. So how would the metal ring be part of that piece of fabric? So, I'm a nurse. Um, I've seen people hurt their hands. Um, if it rips like that, it's not going to leave stuff in the pool at all. At all. So the fact that there was fragments of her glove floating in the pool made absolutely no sense with physics. If she was doing that, she'd have rope burn and stuff like that. So if they wanted to, like, take her glove off and show rope burn to say that's why she's the killer, that would have made way more sense than something floating in the pool. But they had to have something that connected it to Kurumi. So if they're going to do something like that, having her take her glove off and using that instead of injuring her hand and using the glove and the glove mm-hmm. bursts in half and then falls in the pool, then you could have that bit of evidence and why she's not injured because yeah. we already know that everyone has carbon copy of their outfit in. Yeah, because when you're moving that fat, at that fast of a speed with gloves, they're not breaking because it's just falling apart. It's, it's ripping and burning. Like, it's doing yeah. this bit of friction so she'd have, like, second-degree burns if it ripped through. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so this would be our hypothetical chapter two and our hypothetical chapter three. Now we have Kayede die. Mm-hmm. Now, halfway through the game, Kaede dies and you switch protagonists. Mm-hmm. It's way more devastating. You've been so attached to this character. You yeah. have all these plans now. She's had all these character interactions. And suddenly, everyone's ditched the idea of the mastermind from chapter one for some reason. Like, until chapter five, nobody talks about a mastermind or says mm-hmm. anyone is a mastermind. I don't know why. Like, they suddenly forgot, like, hey, who put us here? Yeah. Like, they just completely ditched that, and Kaede wasn't around long enough. It's so. kind of like they didn't get to attach to her enough. Be- be- she wasn't around long enough, be- so even through the attempts the, ge- the the developers were trying to make by making the chapter one longer, it was like the characters felt the way the audience did because... Uh, that was me. I died. My character died. My plans for Kaede are in the pot now, and suddenly I'm a guy. And suddenly the person I was going to ship Kaede with is, oh, this is a whole hot mess. Like, I cared more about that than I cared about Kaede Mm -hmm. as a character when it initially happened. Exactly. And the same, they didn't have the character growth with Kaede. And we would have, and the only, her, her death was devastating, but I kind of felt like it was bait and switch. Like, you finally mm-hmm. get a female protagonist in a trial game. Look, she's dead. Now you're a guy. I'm like, yeah. why'd you even advertise mm-hmm. that then? Like, that's just yeah. kind of... Yeah, and it, it, it was far more devastating the second playthrough because you realize he dies and you see how good of a character he is. Right, you have that Hitchcockian right. buildup of like, mm-hmm. oh gosh, it's happening, but, but I don't, don't want it to happen. You don't, you don't necessarily see that when you first play the game. Right. So I think having her die in chapter mm-hmm. three, all the characters will be more tied mm-hmm. to Kaede, care more about her. She'll leave a more lasting impact, and you could have trickle-down effect from that. And then the fallout from everyone fighting makes more sense. Right. So if you have everyone together and then the fallout 
being chaotic and dying, that's the epitome of everyone just going to crap and not working together at all anymore mm-hmm. and then panicking and then having frustration because the one person they all trusted suddenly turned their back on them. Like, that would be more narratively driven. And it would give them motivation to look for the mastermind and progress the story from chapter three onward. Right. So if we really, really, really have to have a dub- double murder, this would be the place to do it. But mm-hmm. um, our recommendation for this chapter as well is not have Rontaro die in this chapter at all. Uh, kill Samugi. Kill the mastermind. Mm-hmm. Um, because at this point, then the killing game would be going on autopilot. It would be the first killing game where the mastermind isn't the one actually in control of the killing game. The killing game is running itself. Mm-hmm. And that would explain why so many elements are randomly generated, yep. don't make sense, don't light up with each other, why the monocubs and monokuma are just doing whatever they can, why the rules would start breaking, because there's no one there left to enforce the rules. Mm-hmm. Alex, have you read A Man There Were None? Because that's the plot of A Man There Were None. I haven't. Okay, well, well, it's a murder mystery where yeah. everyone dies. It's an Agatha Christie book, and mm-hmm. like, the mastermind is the person who dies like they're reformed. Nice, 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 nice. Um, and then he comes back to life. Right. So chapter three is when Angie's cult starts falling apart. So this was when we'd have like Kaida's execution. The cult has fallen apart mm-hmm. because previously all the killings would have happened at nighttime. And Angie's like the big like nighttime, no nighttime, nighttime's when people die. Mm-hmm. Kaida's murder happened during the day. So if Kaida's murder happens during the day, then everyone would turn their back on Angie and go like, yeah. well, what you're doing is not working. People are still killing other people. They're just doing it in the day now. Like, congratulations, we're out. No more yeah. student council. You could have like a little reflection piece where she's like, oh, this must have been how Kaede felt and why she was so desperate to kill the mastermind. Like I finally mm-hmm. like have like a bit of empathy there. Um, also, the resurrection ritual storyline would have been the same, like having that be the motive. But have everyone argue about um, Tenko as the target for the revival and then have the revival ritual finally finish. But it doesn't work because the mastermind's not there to bring someone back. Mm-hmm. Um I just thought it would be cool if you had, like, Angie working so hard on this resurrection ritual because she believes it's going to work mm-hmm. and because the mastermind's gone and the rules are off the rails that this resurrection ritual doesn't work anymore because the motive's back. And, and rather than not working, it, 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 like, in the game, in, like, the actual game, it would, it, it would work if the mastermind was alive and it would give that book a reason a for being there. It would be foreshadowing that something's gone wrong. Yeah. Um, yes. Would you still, would you have Kaede be the one to kill Samugi? Or Samugi like <laughs> offer herself in a sort of Mukuro esque? We would keep everything else about that trial the same, the Rube Goldberg machine, but instead of having Rontaro oh, die, die, it would be Samugi. And then you wouldn't have the, the murder didn't work, and this is why we're retrialing it. It would be we're having to retrial it because we didn't realize the mastermind died already. Yeah. Yes. How would you work around the little nano cubs that Samuki <laughs> uses to monitor everything? So how would you work around those if we, if you wanted Samuki to be killed? Because she's the mastermind, so she knows everything that's going on. That's how she knew about Kaede's plan. So how would you work around that? I think they're really cute. Like I love mm-hmm. the idea. Like they're designed. They're the cutest mono cub. Like, yeah. I would have a plushie of that. Mm-hmm. Um, all you have to do is alter their purpose. You don't have to have the mono, cu- mono the nano cubs broadcasting to the mastermind. Have the nano cubs broadcasting to the outside world. The mm-hmm. mastermind's not allowed to see it. That way it's a fair game. So if the mastermind dies in the killing game, then the mastermind just wasn't that good of a mastermind mm-hmm. this time, I guess. Um, chapter four. So I'm a nurse. If you go brain dead, you don't suffocate. That is impossible. That is medically impossible. You cannot stop breathing if your brain isn't functioning anymore. That's why people get intubated when they're in a comatose state. They Breathing is subconscious. It is one of the last things to go when you die. So if you think you've died and you're in shock, you will still be breathing. It's why people who fake seizures and fake heart attacks, the minute they actually, like, if they are holding their breath and holding their breath, when they pass out, they start breathing again. Because you can't stop yourself from breathing unless something is blocking your airway or you have had a physical, me- uh, mechanical damage done to the brain. Moving on. Um, Neo makes herself an object in the Neo world during this trial where objects are unbreakable. How did she break? 
how is she able to die if she's an unbreakable object in this Neo world? And that's their explanation for how she died. Um, everything about this Neo world contradicts the canon of SDR2 and DR3 that we're told in both of those. If you die in the Neo world, you'll be just fine. Mm -hmm. So also, why is she dying in this chapter? Um, and Shuichi's lab contains 52 files, the first few being labeled as fictional. He never looks back at these after remembering the Hope's Peak arc, which... <laughs> We are, it's heavily implied when we see those, and if you look back, there's 53, this is 53rd season, there's been 52 seasons. Shouldn't you have recognized that those drawings were from Hope Speak, and gone back and looked at those again, if that's going to be what that little mm -hmm. Easter egg is for? Um, so, but mo most of my stuff is just about me and Konto's motivation in this, is just, like, they turn into different really characters. I used to use toilet paper as a murder <laughs> Uh, like, this is the only franchise, like, how did they, oh, they got strangled toilet paper, what? Yeah, like, even though this is sci-fi, even though this has fantasy elements, every other death prior to this is grounded in reality, has some research to it, has some time put into it, but no matter how I look at this, the fact that Miyu died in this chapter makes zero sense. That shouldn't have been physically possible, yes. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, no, that's just that, that like, from canon aspect, from medical aspect, from just storyline, how they set up the murder in this, like, it should have been a failed attempt if they were trying to kill Miu in this. Mm -hmm. Also, they killed off Gonta, and that's a sin in and of itself. And, and they made him a murderer because he was gonna mercy kill everyone, which... And his execution uh, wasn't even that good. I couldn't even enjoy that. It just, it seemed wildly out of character. Like, mm -hmm. I could see him more trying to hide the truth and lying about things and just being bad yeah. at lying rather than like, yeah, let's just kill everybody. Like, that's the, that's the gentlemanly thing to do. Yeah. Also, his execution is just... It's too much. I'm not much. talking about his, I'm talking about I the ending that happens. Know. Yeah. We no, know. no, we already, we we know. Know. that yeah. was one line, do not do that, yeah. we're done. Um, so our revision for this, Mew's motive. She knows that the current world they are in, physically in, is the Neo World program. If she can get out, she can find a way to get everyone out safely, including the people who have died. That is why she's so focused on creating a smaller version of the Neo world within the Neo world. This would explain why the pixelation's super slow, mm -hmm. why it doesn't match the Neo world we all know and love, and why, why? she's focused and fixated on it. Mm -hmm. It would also give a reason for why she says, please trust me, I'm going to get everyone out of here with this, mm -hmm. if she knew that. Um, Gonta's motive for this chapter. Kokichi and Gonta think winning the game means they have to stay behind in the Neo World program, that they kind of know that that's what's going on as well. So whoever wins gets stuck. Like, have Kokichi know at this point, to some certain degree, that whoever is at the end of the trial mm -hmm. has to play the next killing game. And have that be their motivation for trying to stop Miu from doing what she's doing, because if she can really get everyone out of the Neo World safely, she absolutely shouldn't win the game, because then she will be stuck playing another killing game anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and then Miu's cause of death poison coming in contact with her eye from this helmet that everyone puts on so you can have that fast acting poison still and have it hit the mucosal membrane and have that be the cause of death rather than suffocation mm -hmm. from thinking she suffocated but and have it be intended for Kokichi and then have Gonta switch the helmets so he have gone to see that Miu is messing with Kokichi's helmet and Kokichi telling him like hey she's trying to do something and going to thinking well if Miu's messing with the helmet and Miu gets the broken helmet she'll just fix it before she puts it on and not understanding that she put poison in the helmet yeah we just think it would help keep them more in character there's other ways you could fix this chapter and keep yeah. the same people who died in that order but I think just Playing more into Gonta's gullibility and more into Miu's cockiness would help mm -hmm. with that. Yes? And this is an odd one, and I could entirely be misremembering this, but I swear Miu mentions eye drops as one of her inventions. Yes. Which that would tie in so nicely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such a good way of doing Yeah. Yeah, it would be a nice callback. It would incorporate the poison bottle more than just a red herring, because that would be the actual murder weapon. Yes. Okay, yes. So do you still have it be that Kokichi technically gets gone to kill on a technicality in this way? I, I would... Because I do still like that part of it. I like that part of the chapter as well. Mm -hmm. I would play more into survivor's guilt 
that have Kokichi try to be like, well, I'm the puppeteer. I'm the one who told him all these things. It's my fault he tried to do something. Mm -hmm. And because when we were playing the chapter, um, we'd been going through a lot of theories trying to figure out when Kokichi was lying and when he was telling the truth. Um, And one of the most common fan theories is if Kokichi is facing front, looking at the audience, CGs, sprites, whatever, he is speaking from a place of genuineness. Mm -hmm. And during that trial, when he's yelling at Gonta, he's begging Gonta to come up with a reason why he's not the killer. Begging And he's him. looking straight. Looking straight at him. Tears in his eyes saying, please, yeah. why are you so dumb? Please come up with a reason why you couldn't be the killer. And when that fails, when he can't come up with a... When Gonta can't argue for himself, Kokichi switches gears and tries to take the fact that everyone is ignoring what he says and thinks he's lying and playing devil's advocate. He starts baiting um, Kaito in that a lot and trying to get him mad and get him mad and get him mad and get him to convince everybody to not believe what Kokichi says. Mm-hmm. And then Kokichi says, Gonta's the killer. As soon as Kaito says... He's playing on him being a liar. He's planning on be- being a liar. As soon as Kaito says, well, Kokichi is lying, Kokichi's like, okay, if I'm lying, then Gonta's the killer. Gonta's the killer. Kokichi is one of the most complex characters. He is. Absolutely. He's so fun to analyze. Like, is he lying or not? I don't know. And he had asked at the beginning of that trial as well if there would if there would be two blackens if they were both culpable yeah, and then what he asked about splitting the vote like if the vote were to be split in half would be a um, mm-hmm. her, uh, execution and not innocent. Yeah, so yeah, so he's trying to split the vote, people who would believe Shuichi, people who would believe Kaito, and then it just... And he almost did it. And he yeah. almost did it, and then it just fell on his face, mm-hmm. and as soon as Gonta died, he, like, freaked out as well. Like, when we were watching that chapter, when he realized that Miyu was, like, really dead, because he was like, oh, when the sprite stops moving, that means they're dead, he goes in complete damage control mode and starts following Shuichi around and trying to figure out, like, what Shuichi's thinking. Like, who do you think did it? Who do you think did it? Did it? Like, he's freaking out as the most scatterbrained you see him as he's yeah. trying to figure and out. Yeah, that's really well in the next chapter, too. Yeah, and it made me think that like, originally that death was supposed to be an accident, that they didn't think that that would actually kill Mew, and then, oh gosh, she's really dead, what do we do? Mm-hmm. But then they went and retconned it with Gonta's confession as a sprite, and that was a little odd as well, having, like, I... It felt out of character. For it felt like in order to keep Gonta in character, they had to make, like, an out-of-character Mia world Gonta to be the murderer... And then have real Gonta in the trial crying and being Gonta at everyone and going like, no, Gonta couldn't have done it. And he's like, no, I don't know. I don't remember doing that. And then like, here's this like second Gonta that looked completely different. I did it. So <laughs> I did, did it. it. Me. Me. She'll vote for him. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. They've done that before. They've done that before. Yeah, they've executed Alter Ego. That would have been neat too. Execute Alter ego Gonta and then have Gonta around to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Gonta's a precious boy. Yeah. They did both, yeah. I agree, it should have just been the alter ego kind of thing. Yeah, that would have Hashtag not my Gonta. <laughs> yeah. I have to say that execution. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so bad. So bad. I'm, I'm mostly mad because it's Gontas. He does it better. And there's so many different oh. kinds of bugs that have like different kinds of poisonous bites. If you had done like a brown recluse, which like necroticizes the flesh, you oh, could yeah. have a really like visually stunning execution without being gross. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. This chapter though. Ah, uh, chapter five. I love this one. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember chapter being my favorite chapter, chapter five. Um, and then we realized that the characters are all depressed and talking about killing themselves. And then they remember Hope's Peak Academy, and that's all it is to pull them out of it. Even though everything that the flashback light tells them is the same thing that Kokichi said, but just with Hope's Peak at- on top of it. That's the only difference. Yeah. That's the o- everything lines up with exactly what Kokichi said, except this time, you're from Hope's Peak instead of different high schools. And that's enough to pull them out of literally Himiko's like, Maki, can you kill me? And Maki's like, yeah, sure, just watch this first. And I'm like, what? What? No! Um, the whole chapters are freaking, the trial's a railroad, though. And there's a lot of info oh dumping in this chapter as well. Like, there's there long is. monologues explaining <laughs> things. I've only been able to sit through once. Because <laughs> every other time, it's like, okay, I get it. Yeah, no, no, and we'll circle back to that at the end of the trial as well, because there's something else that really bothers me about it, but that's, like, its own topic. Um, mm-hmm. 
But there's also just a lot of info about dumping in this. And Maki's, like, relentlessly mean. Like, constantly mm. mean. I think there is a reason why she's mean, though. She... She thinks Kaido's dead. Okay. But this is, like, an overlying problem that's been happening with Maki throughout the entire game, which is she cuts people off when they're about to say something important. Um, she cut Korokio off when he said that he was possessed by another spirit. Like, and almost revealed that his, he thought his sister was inside mm-hmm. on him. He, she cuts off Kibo way early when he's talking about his inner voice and that he's literally hearing voices. Um, mm-hmm. She cuts Shuichi off when he's about to come with right conclusions to things and then says, shut up, that's stupid, no, we're moving on. And in this one, when we know this character has been in, like, a really dark, deep, like, depression in a place where she thought she had no hope, having her just be like, suck it up, buttercup, I'll kill you later, was just... Not a good counter argument to suicidal ideation. Um, it wasn't very nurturing. It wasn't, mm-hmm. and I know she's not a nurturing character, but she is the ultimate child caregiver to a certain extent. Children love her. Like, this would be the pivotal mo- point to show that other talent at work is that even though she's this gruff person, even though she's super mean, she has the side to know when to put it down and say, This person needs help. Mm-hmm. Like, if she's supposed to be a sundere, show me the sugar. Show me the sweet. You're giving me freaking a uh, soon soon. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I need to show that wall come down rather than, hey, watch this YouTube video and then we'll talk about how you want to kill yourself. Like, that was not, like, yeah. the answer to that. Um, for revisions, um, have the trial change depending on the player's choice. Mm -hmm. Since both of these characters die anyway, this would be the pivotal point where you could do alternate endings and have you pick who the killer was in this situation, who the characters think the killer was, and then you could have different goodbye scenes depending on who's in the exosol. And that's the only additional writing that it would be. All that would need to be written is one extra scene. It wouldn't change the ending or anything either. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. which means the culprit wouldn't reveal themselves until after voting time. Cause like when we were playing it this time, I was so mad at Kaito for like, Kokichi's plan almost worked. And then Kaito was like, hi Shuichi. And I'm like, what are you doing? What was this all for? If you're just going to be like, no, no, it's me. Like you almost got it to work. You almost did it. Um, and then have Angie and Kibo in this chapter, because Angie's still surviving at this point in our revision, um, revitalize the student council and try to help with the depressed students. So have like a rebirth of the student council, but mm-hmm. one from empathy rather than one from control. And that would just show Kibo being Kibo in the nicest way. It could show some character growth on yeah. Angie's part where she's actually listening to people instead of just talking out of her head. Yeah. Um, and it would just be, I think, a more wholesome counter argument to depression mm-hmm. rather than just get over it, buttercup, and yeah. find a new reason to live already, you nerd. <laughs> hey, you dumb nerd. Yeah, you dumb nerd. Um, Chapter six. Uh, Do we have to? Yes. Cut the meta jokes and references in half. Because this was just, it was all over the place. Um, Diversify the characters' reactions to being told they're fictional. Once you get through the first part of the trial, Maki and Himiko go silent for most of it. It's Kibo and Shuichi talking back and forth with Sumugi in the middle. They don't do anything. They don't have any different reactions. Have Himiko maybe be like, okay, I'm cool with being fictional because I've been role-playing my whole life. And then have Maki be like, my life is a lie. What the hell? Did I actually kill another, any human being at all? Like, have, like, some, you know, variety to being told mm-hmm. you're not real. All your memories are fake. All your personality and everything you are is, you know. We already went off on cost packs. Um, the big bad yeah. should not, should be the Danganronpa team, not the audience. Mm-hmm. Have the company that's manufacturing the killing games be the bad guy because that's who put them in there, not the audience. Mm-hmm. That's who who's benefiting from these killing games still happening. That's who's giving Smoogie her paycheck to write her bad fan fiction. That is the real bad guy. <laughs> um, I brought up the one flashback light gives five memories in this for no reason and is delayed for no reason. And they're all just doubled down on bad ideas. Yeah. Um, and then all the things that we have issues with in this chapter, in this trial about fiction versus lies and stuff is a giant Utena reference. It's yeah. all referencing the ending of Revolutionary Girl Utena. Yep. Yep. Uh, so a big thing is, and something that I remember how I said I hated Angie. This made me like Angie a little bit because I hate Akio. And she's a reference to Akio. Yes, because she 
It's a cult. Student council is a cult. And what is the student council and revolutionary girl Lieutenant? A cult. Um, yeah, the trial grounds are also a revolutionary girl lieutenant mm -hmm. reference. It's, it's, um, Rontaro's mm -hmm. room is the ultimate survivor is a revolutionary girl lieutenant it's got reference. Roses the all whole over game. The, yeah, basically. it's got roses. It's got roses all over the ground and swords all over the ground. The trial uh, all, is uh, the green, is the greenhouse and antenna, while the inside is the waterfall that opens up. Um, like all the monologues about mm -hmm. the world not being real, about finding reality and like leaving the mm -hmm. fictional world and stuff like that. That's all Utena. And even Monokuma says, oh, that barrier is the end of the world. He goes as far as to say that. So like all the parts that don't make sense were referenced from an art piece anime that mm -hmm. wasn't plot based, it was art based. So yeah. that's why in a video game that's plot based, it just sounds, it's all junky. Yeah. And I hate it less now that I know that it had logic behind it. Because before I was like, where are you pulling this idea? What is going mm -hmm. on? That's why it's another anime reference. Yep. So for the revisions for this, instead of retrialing Rontaro's death, show evidence of Monokoma messing with multiple trials um, and breaking the rules. Have the climax be that Maki was the real killer for chapter five, regardless of who died, because you could have still been poisoned to death while waiting for the um, press to come down. Mm -hmm. So if that was the real cause of death and you have Maki say, actually, that was an instant acting poison and all that stuff was talked about while I wasn't in the room, then Monokuma would have been got wrong regardless of who died in that chapter. And you could mm -hmm. keep that alternate ending intact. Um, have that the whole killing game is revealed to be staged within the Neo world. The characters have been stuck in a time loop, and these 53 iterations are 53 times they've been reset and had to start the killing game again. So that the ultimate survivor is the person that gets to keep their memories from the last season. Um, and then you could have a rule of three that we noticed that two times Kaede and Shuichi mm -hmm. leave lockers and meet each other for the first time. You could have the ending be they leave and meet each other for the first time again. Rule of threes. Much more satisfying mm -hmm. than just having this two, this, two. this double scene mm -hmm. and just, you know, kind of wonky. Um, the reason the killing game can't be stopped is because there's no mastermind manning it anymore. It's the company and the outside world that's keeping the killing game going, even though there's nobody, like, deliberately puppeting things behind the scenes. And then have the characters unite, with, not untie, uh, unite with the audience <laughs> to stop the Danganronpa team within this universe. Mm -hmm. um, it just, and we also noticed that they, like, they stopped partway through and switched us to Kibo, and if we had been Kibo the whole time instead of Shuichi, those voting as audience input would have been way more meta, because then it would have felt more like it's a commentary on visual novel mechanics and less on the audience itself. Um, so the reason we think that some of this trial got so wonky is... Guess who's friends with the creator of Zero Escape? Kodaka is. He was greatly inspired by it, and we think he was hoping to do a branching pathway with multiple mm -hmm. masterminds with stuff like that, but it's such a big idea to cram it all in a killing game where, like, when someone dies, it changes mm -hmm. chapter four, five, six, that it just was so much writing. It was so much writing, they probably relied on that so heavily that it was their big thing for a long time and they realized they had to cut it. Do it so they had to come up with something so and yeah we think that's why kibo was a protagonist in the initial poster we think kibo was supposed to be a protagonist maybe kaede was supposed to be a protagonist the whole time and maybe shuichi was supposed to be a protagonist the whole time and they each would have had mm -hmm. a different mastermind that countered what they stood for. So a different version of lies, a different version of hope. And why Kokichi seems like a mastermind character, maybe he used to be. And they had to cut that, cram his storyline that they already wrote into the story, and then keep that intact. Mm -hmm. That's why Sumugi seems so blank. Because if Sumugi was a mastermind in a multi-mastermind game, she wouldn't have seemed as weird as she is for just the mastermind for the whole thing. And it would make sense with that 53 iterations of the same people going over again, because rather than it being alternate timelines, it's different games are being played. Because, like, how much would it suck for the punishment of two people being left is one's the ultimate survivor and one has to be the mastermind next time? Mm -hmm. That would have been so, like, awful. Imagine the replayability. The replayability, though. <laughs> uh, but it's such a tall task when you're doing branching narratives. It's thousands it and thousands really of words of writing. Is. And it's just, it, it doesn't matter how much money you have behind it, the amount no. of time that goes into this. This game was delayed twice and yet had, like, a whole bunch of mini games in it. This has 
like we think this might be why yeah. yeah there's so much conflicting stuff crammed into one game is that they didn't when you write something and you love it and then you go oh no this doesn't work you don't want to throw it away especially if you've mm-hmm. spent hours of time if you spent months of time in it and if you love the characters too so like i could see why as a creator they were looking at it and they're like we can't throw away kokichi's storyline we can't throw away angie's storyline we can't throw away any of this so Oh, but what about all these ideas we had for the different kinds of apocalypses that could have been outside for the different yeah, places? Like, Put them all the in. It's our last time to have them. Like the apocalypse changed like every time it got brought up. Yes. Mm-hmm. No, and it, they didn't exactly. match with each other. They didn't. And like even Kokichi brings up like anything could happen, even like a plague. And he brought up the plague before they even had the memories of the virus. So I'm like, boy, what did you read? What are you looking at? What did you find? Um. And nobody comments on that either. No, they just like, Kokichi, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, stop ignoring my boy. Stop ignoring Kokichi, he clearly yeah. knows what he's talking about. He's being a detective because the detective's the player character now, and we need somebody running around behind the scenes finding stuff that wasn't supposed to be hidden. Little... Such and such, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, to close, we're going to talk about something a little heavy. So, um... Media guidelines for releasing stories about suicide. When news stations have to announce something about suicide, these are the rules. They, you are not supposed to tell people that suicide ends pain or ends suffering. People need to be alive to feel relief from pain. Suicide causes pain. Do not say suicides occur because of one event, like a killing game. Suicides rarely are caused by one event. It's mental illness. It's a comp... Like stressors, it's a whole bunch of different things. Never portray suicide as heroic. What are the characters arguing about chapter six? It's that, oh, we're gonna kill ourselves and that's gonna fix everything for everyone. That was the conclusion they came to. Um, And then empathize with the number one cause for suicide. Um, The number one cause for suicide is untreated depression. Who has untreated depression in this game? Shuichi, he is depressed the whole game chronically depressed every single time he takes a step forward something happens and his self-esteem crushes and his depression gets worse and the scene where he's like spending three days in his room he hasn't showered maki sees him and like insults him when like it's obvious he hasn't eaten he's not taking care of himself like he's in a really low place right now and she's just like gosh just find like literally after you see that scene monokuma comes forward and says just find another reason to live if this is how you're feeling like what are you doing like i felt so insulted when i saw that Granted, that, make, that fits Monokuma to be a complete jerk. It but. does, but he was yeah. talking directly to the audience in this, not to any of the characters. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, like, it breaks some really serious guidelines. Yeah. It can really hurt. Like, if it was Monokuma just talking to Shuichi... That would be that one would be thing. Be one thing. But there's but, two different Monokumas where he's talking to the audience yeah. and basically, like, paternalizing the audience. Like, if you identify with these depressed characters and these ideations, just get over it and find a new reason yeah. to live. It's that easy. And it's like, no, it's not. And that's no. so not helpful to tell teenagers mm-hmm. that are playing these games and might be identifying with these characters that are going through rough struggles. Yeah. Um, and you must indicate when you're doing stories about suicide in the news that depression is treatable. And thus, anyone suffering from depression needs to receive immediate help. The answer in this chapter should have been their friendship and relying on each other to get through that rough time, not watch this YouTube video. It will fill you with hope. Um, watch this video. It will cure um, all of yeah, your we're, we're going over it. So um, suicide's never the answer. Getting help is the answer. And chapter five and chapter six broke all of these regulations. Um, this is a problem that's in video games a lot. Doki Doki Literature Club broke a lot of these regulations, even though they yeah. had warnings. You must never, ever, 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 ever show a suicide on screen, and that triggered someone into trying to kill themselves. I know the developers didn't mean it, but that's what happened, because these regulations exist for a reason. Unfortunately, these regulations only exist for news stories. They don't exist for video games. And it's... a a lot of indie developers have been running into problems with this too. And it's just one of those things where I think we need to be looking at video games as something super influential because it's not just seeing it on screen. You are living this character's life. You are seeing things through this character's eyes. You are making decisions as this character. You are reading their inner monologue about how they want to kill themselves. And that internalizes, especially if you are impressionable. And just as a nurse, having seen... 12 kids in the hospital because of 13 reasons why. Sorry. (laughs) Um, 
seeing the reaction V3 had on a lot of teenagers taking the darker themes of this and identifying with it and them thinking it's a joke, thinking it means it's okay, reinforcing those darker themes and not seeing the light side. It is the duty of the author to show authorial intent and showing which side of that argument you agree with. And this game said that giving up is the answer. And I'm so sad that that was what they came to for a new tenant reference. Um, and that would be my biggest fix, honestly, is just either handle those kinds of themes with delicacy or don't handle them at all. Um, and when you acknowledge in your game that hope versus despair and people are identifying with these characters and you know this is a thing, paternalizing them and making their struggles into a joke and a punchline is not okay. Um, but yeah, sorry to end it on such a bummer note, guys. But um, thank you so much for joining our panel and listening to us to ramble so much about a game that I do have such a soft spot for. Um, I just, there's some aspects of it that disappointed me. And if they ever do do a sequel, which it sounded like they were setting it up for for some were. reason, um, I hope that they look back and make some changes, if nothing else, to make a cohesive storyline. Um, but yeah, thank you, and we'll let, we'll let you go.